I'm sitting. Hi, I serve. Yep, I'm sitting. I see that. This is the best seat in the house. I can see it all. Wow, that's, that's pretty great. This place is great. We have such a great choir. This is definitely what it feels like to be free. Well, you know, I know the choir's always looking for new members. Maybe I could introduce No, them. no, I, I can't sing. Besides, this is such a great seat. I mean, I love talking to the ushers and the greeters when they come by. You know, I think you would really like to be on the greeter team. Maybe I could talk to- No, no, I, I have a bad knee. All that standing and walking. Speaking of walking, those parking tenants did a good job helping me find a spot to park this morning. Wow, you know, I'm on the parking team. Why don't you join us? No, no, I, I get overheated pretty easily. Plus, the cold weather makes my bad knee stiff. But I just love this seat. Love this seat, yeah. Love my seat. Well, if serving during the church service is difficult for you, I know a connection group who cooks meals for shut-ins. I even know a group that's putting a roof on a house. Nah. I think I just want to sit here all week long. In fact, why don't you join me? Experience the comfort. The width of the seat is perfect, and the back keeps my posture secure. Hey, you know, thanks a lot for the offer, but I really need to get back out and help with the parking team. But hey, enjoy the view. I believe I will. So what about you? Are you sitting or are you serving? That's a big question. Our sermon series today uh, that we began last Sunday is called Activate. Would you say that with me? And then just take you back to your childhood watching cartoons when you say, activate. <laughs> we began last week with the story of Moses and learning how having only one person do all the ministry is going to wear everybody out. God's got a great plan, and it's the big idea for this series. It's on the notes in your bulletin. If you have one, it's also on the screen as well. Here's the big idea. God has already provided everything necessary to meet all the needs of our community. People tend to get upset at God. God, you're such a big God. You're such a loving God. So why are all these needs around? Why do people have this issue or that issue? Well, the reality is God has already done something about all of them by placing all the resources and gifting to meet those needs in the body of Christ. And so the solution to meeting needs is for everybody in the body of Christ to activate those gifts, those talents, those resources in the body of Christ so that needs will be met in the church, in the community, and the world. Somebody say amen. So that's, that's the heart of what we're sharing here today because we were created to serve. You were not made to sit and do nothing. You were made to serve other people. Look at the scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The scripture says, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Everybody say good works. First Peter chapter four, verse 10 says, each one should use whatever gift he's received to serve himself. Is that what it says? No, each one should use whatever gift he's received to serve who? So that means everybody's got a gift. Everybody means you. Say everybody means me. God says everybody's got a gift and you should use that gift not to serve yourself, you should use that gift to serve others. Now, serving is what Jesus did very well. As a matter of fact, the title of the message today is Serving Like Jesus. Uh, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, Jesus sums up his purpose for coming to the world. He says, your attitude must be like my own, for I did not come to be served, but to serve. Now, how many know serving choosing to serve begins with your attitude. And Jesus says, your attitude should be like mine. Now, let me stop here for a second and just say, how many understand that when you get saved, when you follow Jesus, when you put your faith in Christ to save you from sin, to save you from hell so that you can have eternal life, it's not over after that. You have a purpose. You have a reason for being. Otherwise, we should have a ministry called, you know, as soon as you get right with God, go kidnap them, hide them in a corner till Jesus comes back or they die so they can make it straight to heaven. No backsliding allowed. Wouldn't that be great? No, the Bible says you have a greater purpose than just that. Following Christ is about becoming like Jesus. 
Paul said in Romans that we were chosen to be conformed to the image of his son. So our goal as believers in Jesus, what am I supposed to be doing right now? I'm supposed to be coming to be becoming like Jesus. I'm supposed to think like Jesus. I'm supposed to love like Jesus. I'm supposed to act like Jesus. Are you with me so far? So what am I doing? Why do we do all of these Bible studies and Wednesday nights and ministries? Because we want to grow to be like Jesus. Are you with me on that? Does everybody agree? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be becoming like Jesus. And so if you're going to be like Jesus, guess what? You've got to become a servant. If you're going to imitate Christ, then it's going to be very natural for you to begin to serve others because that's what Jesus did. Jesus did said, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. And he says, that's what your attitude should be like, not to be served. Your attitude should be, I want to serve others. Because how many know it's abnormal in the kingdom of God to serve yourself? It's just backwards in the kingdom of God to only be concerned about yourself. It goes against everything taught in this book. It goes against all the scriptures of the Bible to serve yourself because God expects you to use your talents and gifts and resources to serve others. Don't shout me down, right? Your, and, and here's the deal, your relationship with God will grow when you start to serve others. When you serve others, you'll become more like Jesus. Isn't it amazing how that happens? Because God made us to be contributors to the body, not just consumers. Now, let me, let me illustrate this for a second. How many, how many know a lot of people, uh, if they're in a transition of life, maybe they're moving or, or some sort of transition going on, they, they're, they're looking for a church home to, to be connected to, to grow with. Uh, here's how a lot of people look for a church. They ask the question, how can this church meet my needs. How can this church help me? How can this church benefit my kids, my family, my, are, are you with me? But how many understand that's, that's backwards from what Jesus is saying because the question should be not how can this church help me, but God, where do you want me to use my gifts and talents to contribute to the body of Christ? Where can I best serve the body of Christ? Because the reality is we've created this culture of 21st century American Christians where we've become consumers of religious goods and services. And I said this last week, I'm going to repeat it again in case you didn't hear it. The result of that type of thinking is that we have churches trying to out-entertain and compete over shallow, carnal Christians. I just explained (laughs) a whole lot of what's going on around here. But that's not the Bible. That's not the heart of Jesus. Jesus says all of us should be servants. We should be serving like Jesus. Jesus is our example. Matter of fact, Jesus says, watch me, how I do it, and then you imitate me. Okay? And so if we're going to serve, we need to serve like Jesus. So how do I serve like Jesus? Three things. Write these down on your notes. They're on the screen. Uh, Here it goes. Number one, serving like Jesus. If I'm going to serve like Jesus, it means they have to be Available. Would you say that? Available. Now, Jesus is walking down the road to Jericho one day in Matthew chapter 20, and the Bible says two blind men shouted, Lord, have mercy on us. The scripture says Jesus stopped and called them. He says, what do you want me to do for you? Now, what do you think the most important word in that verse is? Jesus stopped. He was on his way somewhere else. He had a mission to accomplish. He had a task to achieve. And so the most important part of that verse is that Jesus stopped to help somebody and said, what do you want me to do for you? Now, how many know if you want to be used by God, you're going to have to allow your schedule to be interrupted. You're going to have to allow your to-do list to be interrupted so that you can help others. As a matter of fact, if you look at Jesus' life, you can see that a lot of his miracles occurred while he was being interrupted. Matter of fact, his very first miracle was he was at a wedding. Hey, dude, leave me alone. I'm at a wedding. But he does a miracle. The woman with the issue of blood, Jesus is on his way to someplace else. She comes up behind him and grabs his robe, and she receives a healing. Now, how many know it would have been easy for Jesus to say to all those folks, guys, leave me alone. I'm busy. I'm about the Father's business. I got three years to get all this stuff done. <laughs> but along the way, Jesus meets needs. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 28 says, Never tell your neighbors to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. John Wesley put it real clear. He said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, by all the ways you can, in all the places you can, and at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. That pretty much covers it. Because why do we need to be available? Because hurting people can't wait. Wounded people can't wait for us to get it, for us to get around to it, for us to fit it in on our schedule. Needs are now. The needs are urgent, right? So what keeps us from being available? Well, there are three things that keeps us from being available. The first thing is self-centeredness. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to the people sitting beside you, by the way. This is not for you. <laughs> we have this issue with self-centeredness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 says, Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Anytime you see a need in front of you, do you realize that is God giving you an opportunity to serve somebody else? The number one enemy of compassion and showing compassion is what? Go ahead. It's busyness. We're too busy. I don't have time. I got my agenda. I got my plans. I got my dreams. I got my schedule, my job, my school, my kids, all this kind of stuff. And you know what we've done to the world who is hurting and needs the body of Christ to activate? We have placed a do not disturb sign over the door of our heart and say, don't bother us. No wonder the world gets ticked off. We are the answer to the world's problems. God has placed the gifts and resources and talents and gifts in the body of Christ. And we're saying, don't bother us. We are too busy. Our goal is to get to the place where we become like Jesus. And we say, you know what? My agenda is God's agenda. And whatever God places in front of me, that's what I'm going to do. Matter of fact, I double dog dare you to pray a prayer like this. Triple dog dare you. To, to pray a prayer like this, it'll change your life. Are you ready? Especially if you're kind of depressed, your, your relationship with God's a little stale, and you're just kind of, oh, just kind of in the mullet grubs. Here you go. Pray, I, dare, a triple do, I quadruple dog dare you to pray this prayer. God, bring somebody across my path today that has a need and help me to meet it. All of a sudden, you'll start to live this adventurous life of excitement and faith and courage. Just because you said, I'm going to be available, I'm not going to focus on myself. Here's the second reason we're not available. It's perfectionism. Perfectionism. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything accomplished. Don't raise your hand. Don't, don't testify. If you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything accomplished. You know, here's the reality. You know what? They say, well, you know, when this happens or, you know, when I get my, get my life straightened out or, or I get my family together or, or I get more time, you know, and I, I don't have to work three jobs and four jobs and overtime and all this stuff, then I'll serve the Lord and I'll get involved in ministry and I'll help people out. I have a word from the Lord for all of you. Are you ready to receive this? All of those things that you're waiting for to happen, they're not going to happen. So go ahead and serve now. Go ahead and get involved now. Go ahead and serve the Lord by serving others now. Come on, somebody. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. And so, and so you say, but pastor, you don't, you don't understand. I, I'm not perfect. I've, I've made some mistakes. I've, I've, I've hurt some people. I've got this past. I've got some very good news. First of all, the name on the church outside says what? grace. That's our testimony. It's not just our name. That's our testimony. That's our creed. That's our doctrine, the grace of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. And here's the reality, because God can't use perfect people because they don't exist. Matter of fact, if you apply to be part of the perfect church, they would reject you as they would reject me because none of us are perfect. So whatever you're waiting for, to happen, do it now. Here's the third reason we're not available. It's because of materialism. Materialism. This is especially true in our culture. Luke 16, verse 13 says, No servant can serve two masters. You can't serve both God and money. Now, please notice that Jesus didn't say you shouldn't serve God 
or and money. He says, you can't. It's impossible. You have to choose one or the other. And God is saying, you can pursue a life of materialism and bigger houses and bigger cars and more stuff, more, 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 more. It's called stuffitis. How many seen Veggie Tales? Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? It's a disease that we have. Or you can choose to live a life of contentment and serving others. Now listen, you've got to decide. Do I want to be rich or do I want to be blessed? There's a problem if you're too busy taking care of things that you can't take care of people. So what's keeping you from being available? Is it self-centeredness? Is it perfectionism? Is it materialism? Here's the second uh, thing of being like Jesus. Serving like Jesus means being grateful. Serving like Jesus means being grateful. Now, we see this in the life of Jesus when he feeds the, the multitude of, with five loaves and two fishes. He feeds 5,000 folks. Now, look at this. Matthew 15. He took the seven loaves and the fish, and the Bible says he did what? He gave thanks. Then he broke them and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitude. So before Jesus met the need of feeding those folks, and how many know that was a very real need, the Bible says very publicly, and it made such, a, such an impact on the, the disciples there that they wrote it in their Gospels. Jesus, before he broke the bread, before he multiplied, he gave what? Thanks. I want you to notice that. Why did, why did Jesus do that? I think Jesus was modeling for everybody what ministry is all about. Ministry begins with gratitude. Ministry begins with gratitude. Paul says, I thank my God for putting me in the ministry. Psalm 100 verse 2 says, serve the Lord with sadness. Serve the Lord because of condemnation. Serve the Lord because Pastor Wayne is really good at making people feel bad about not getting involved in church. Is that what it says? No, the Bible says serve the Lord with what? With gladness. So some of you can just go ahead and notify your face. Serve the Lord with gladness. Awesome. How do you serve the Lord with, gad with gladness? It comes with gratitude. It comes with understanding that everything that I get to share with others is because I've been given the privilege from Almighty God. The Bible says those who have been forgiven much love much. Those people who understand the cross of Jesus, we sang about it earlier, we gathered around the Lord's table. Those people who truly understand the price that has been paid to purchase you, to buy you, to bring you to himself, understand I'm only doing what is required of a servant because I've been grafted in, I've been adopted, I've been chosen by the one true God to be a part of his family. And so if he gives me talents and abilities, to re I am grateful to have the opportunity to serve others. So we get to serve others. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work, not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan. So if we're going to serve like Jesus, we, it's because we're grateful like Jesus. So what keeps us from being grateful? Well, there's a couple, couple things. What keeps us from being grateful is comparing ourselves to others and criticizing other people. Comparing and criticizing. Romans 14, verse 4, who are you to criticize someone else's servant? The Lord will determine whether his servant has been successful. The reason we're not grateful, maybe even the reason we don't serve, is because sometimes we're jealous of what God has given to other people. Their talents, their gifts, their abilities, their skills. And we say, you know, why are that person up there? Why does that person get to do that? Why is that person in that leadership position? Blah, 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 blah. You don't know what they did. You, you know, I know. Blah, blah. Listen, God says, time out. He, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and just, you can go ahead and resign as the manager of the universe. <laughs> God says, I got this. At the end of the day, it's not your job to judge other people's motives. Oh, I'm preaching now. He says, you got to leave that to me. And I'll determine who's successful and who's not, right? You just go ahead and serve out of gratitude. You know what happens when we compare ourselves to others? We just play the enemy's game. He's the accuser. When we criticize others, we're helping the enemy do what he does best. He accuses and criticizes. Come on, man. I feel God here today. This is, this is the truth, right? The Holy Spirit. So we can't compare and criticize because that's only going to steal the joy of serving. 
Why are we not grateful? The other reason is because of our wrong motivations. Matthew 6, when you do good deeds, don't try to show off. (laughs) If you do, you won't get a reward from your Father in heaven. That's pretty clear. Jesus said, whatever you're doing, don't do it to be seen by people. Don't do it for any other reason than to just bless God. Because self-promotion and serving don't go together. I'll never forget, uh, Tim and I, we went to Bible college together. And one particular day, we're at a, ch- a local church there. And a guy that's singing special music happened to be somebody we knew. And uh, uh, he's singing a song that day in church. Now, he's got on a white suit, white jacket, white turtleneck, and a gold chain that went about down to here. Before You know, this is what he's singing in that day. And this is what he said. And I know it was a faux pas, but this is what he said before he sang the song. He said, worship me with him. He said, worship me with him. Now, as you might be aware, Bible college students, we would never let that go. And we reminded that guy mercilessly for years and years because what he intended to say was, worship him with me. But everything he was wearing, <laughs> it kind of, he was sending some missed messages there if you don't. Get what I'm saying. Listen, I say that to say sometimes our serving is self-serving oh, because we're saying uh, we serve because we want other people to like us or we serve because we want to be admired or we serve because it looks good on our community service report at school. That was free GCE students. And all the time we're serving, we're thinking how noble we are. Oh, is this, I'm awesome. I am awesome. Because <laughs> I'm serving. Or here, here's another way. We, we punch the martyr card. Bless God, I've been doing this forever. Nobody, nobody knows. And, <laughs> and sometimes our serving is just a way to manipulate God. We think we're bartering with God. God, I, if I do this, you'll do this, right? God, if I do this, no, 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 no. God said, here's what Jesus said. Your attitude should be, I did what was required as a servant. That's our heart. That's what being like Jesus is about because wrong motivations will never last in serving. We can do our best in the next few weeks to, to, to move you into a place of ministry, sign up, and maybe you'll even get started. But if you don't have a heart of gratitude, it won't last. Are you with me so far? So if you want to serve like Jesus, you got to be available. Secondly, you got to serve with a grateful heart. And the last one, number three, serving like Jesus means being faithful. Everybody say faithful. Now, what does faithful mean? What does it mean to be faithful? It means you don't quit. It means you don't give up. It means you don't quit on your assignment. Now, again, we see this in the life of Jesus. In John 17, he's he's praying. He's about to go to the cross, and here's what he says. God, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Jesus was standing before God at the end of his life, watch this, and said, God, I completed what you gave me to do. I completed the assignment. Wouldn't you love to be able to stand before God on your day of judgment and say, God, I did everything you asked me to do. I completed the assignment you gave me. I was faithful. Serving like Jesus means being faithful because Jesus was faithful. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. The one thing required of servants is that that they have a lot of talent. The one thing required of servants is that they have a great testimony and be on TBN and tell everybody. The one thing required of servants is that they have a lot of skill or ability. Is any of that in that verse? Thank God. The one thing required of servants is that they be what? Faithful. The one thing you need to be successful in God's eyes, watch this, is just be faithful. We get enamored with people's talents. We get enamored with people's charisma and their personality and their skill and their quote-unquote anointing. And God is not amazed or impressed by any of those things. God is impressed by one thing, faithfulness. Faithfulness. 
We're going to be surprised when we get to heaven. And all these people are going to be getting rewards. We're going to be judged by our motives and all those things that we did and how we served other people. And I got a feeling we're not going to know the names of the people who are going to receive the greatest rewards. Because our standards for serving are not the same as God's standards. God says, serve faithfully. Several years ago, two teenage boys tried to come into a church service one night. But the service was full, and they couldn't find any seats. So they turned around and decided to leave. One of the ushers saw them and said, guys, wait just a minute. Let me help you find a seat. And that usher personally escorted them down to the center aisle and set them in the middle and found them two seats. That night, both of those teenage boys gave their lives to Jesus Christ. One of them is named Billy Graham. who has now led tens of millions of people to Jesus. So here's my question. Do you think that usher is going to get any credit in heaven for all those souls? Do you really think that? I do. I know for a fact he will because he was faithful. See, we have, we have no idea the significance of little acts. We have no idea of, of the significance of small acts because it's all important. It's all important to God. God sees, God knows, and God's watching. Let me give you a little quiz here today before we pray. Do you know the name of the person who greeted you when you walked into church today? Do you know the name of the teacher who is teaching your toddlers and children right now? Do you know the name of the person who is overseeing the video image that you're looking at? Do you know the names of the musicians who were on the platform earlier helping us lead in worship? Do you know the name of the people who prayed for you this week when you turned in your prayer request card and part of the prayer guardian ministries who said, God, meet this need? All anonymous volunteers. And without them, there's no service today. There's no ministry happening today. If not for an incredible number of faithful people who are willing to do something. It's all important. Faithful servants do the tasks because they all matter. I said they all matter. Do you understand that? Do you know that do you know the name of the people who prepared the communion that you received a little bit earlier today? Did that just magically happen? We walked in the kitchen, boom, all the little cups are filled and the bread's all organized and there's a certain number in each one. No, Mike and Brenda Awe did that this morning before anybody got here. I was driving up an hour before the service and they were, they were walking out. They just completed that task. They've been doing that for the last year. Janie Neely did it for 10 years straight. Did you know Alan Lee oversees our parking lot team. And for four years now, every Sunday, rain or shine, hot or cold, they're out there helping people stay organized and find a place to park. Did you know that Skip and Ann Dodd regularly visit those people in our church who are homebound? They can't come to a public service because they can't get out of their house. And they visit them and they serve them communion and they pray for them and they encourage them. Did you know that uh, Nathan Dutton and Dave Nethery and others goes to Hickory Creek Nursing Home every Sunday and have led a service there for those residents for the past five years? Did you know Robin Reed has started from the ground up a grassroots ministry called Free Indiana that stays in contact with the Indiana State Attorney General and other state and local leaders for the purpose of educating, training, and assisting in all types of human, tra human trafficking rescues and needs right here in Indiana? Did you know that last month our name counselors who, these are men and women who have been trained to come alongside couples who are in a, in a challenging time. Last month our name counselors had 20 different sessions where they met with couples who were in crisis. You know, Wade Letterman has either served or provided leadership for the usher ministry every Sunday at Grace for the past 12 years. I wish I had time. To go on, uh, there are so many stories and so many names I could tell. People who are just faithful. Here's some good news. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. 
He will not forget how hard you worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other Christians. God says, I'm not going to forget that. God says, I'm not going to forget you. I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm seeing, I'm not going to forget. Oh, that's good news. Because we don't do what we do for ourselves. We do what we do for God. See, we think worship is about singing off the wall, singing songs and music. No, no, no. Worship is the way we live our lives. It's serving Him. Have you ever wondered why God brought you to this church? Have you ever wondered why God brought you to Grace Assembly of God? Can I go ahead and answer that question for you? Because I know. God brought you here because God knew you've got something to give back. He didn't bring you here just to sit and to soak and sour. Now listen, let me just give a time out here for a second. Some folks find their way to church after a season of hurt, a season of wounding, a season of just being worn out or whatever. I get that. Over, over the past 16 years of our church, that's happened a lot. And so if that's you, you sit, you just be blessed, you let God heal the wounds, let, you, let God encourage you. We want to be that place for a while. But after a while, God wants you to get back in the game and to serve and to bless. Why did God bring you here? God brought you here because he knew that you were a vital link to helping this church touch the needs of this community and change the world for Jesus. A particular background that you have, a particular skill that you have, a particular testimony that you have, a particular passion that you have. You're looking at the volunteer list in the bulletin here this morning, and you're looking over these uh, existing ministries and future ministries, and you say, but I don't see what's on my heart. Hi, I got, some, I got some really good news. Go ahead and let's dream together. Let's see what God has in mind. We want to be that place where people who are free to, to serve, free to try, free to give effort. Can I tell you, we've failed a lot over the years. We kind of follow the Tommy Barnett uh, school of ministry philosophy. Just throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. If it sticks, hey, let's keep doing it. If not, let's try something else. You're part of the puzzle that makes up the body of Christ at Grace Assembly. And how many know you can have a thousand piece puzzle? The puzzle's got a thousand pieces. You put it together and there's one piece missing. Which one do you notice first? You notice the missing piece. What do you call a body, a human body, that doesn't have all of its members working, all of its faculties, all of its limbs working? We call that handicapped. It's the same in the body of Christ. If every one of us aren't serving and aren't contributing the way that God has prepared us and equipped us for, then we're not operating in full capacity. We're not activating the way God wants us to be. Grace Assembly of God is not everything it can be if you're not involved. Stand with me if you would. Hey, Pastor, where are you going with this series? Are you just going to keep provoking us? Yes. But here's what we're going to do next week. Next week we're going to help you begin to identify how God has prepared you to serve other people. And with your passions, your experiences, your spiritual gifts, things like that, we're going to put a tool in your hands next week that's going to help you. Uh, none of us are going to grade any of those things and say, well, you're this, you're that. You're going to do a self-evaluation, and that's going to help us. Because two weeks from today, we're going to have a ministry fair where all of the ministries of our church uh, are going to be on display, and you're going to find out the different opportunities that you have to serve. We have a ton of ministries in our church, and they're all listed in here. And not only do we have a, a ton ongoing, but we have a lot, of, a lot of ideas, a lot of needs that aren't being met right now. And God's looking for some people to step up, and maybe you're that person. And uh, as I said before, we'll come alongside. We'll help you. And uh, together... God's going to do wonderful things. But let me follow today's message up with this question. 
or this statement rather. You can do two things with your life. Everybody's given a certain amount of time to live. We don't exactly know how many days, how many months, how many minutes, how many seconds do we run, Marshall? Give God praise for Ron Marshall. Survived a heart attack. God has blessed him and got him in good health. Amen. But Ron, Ron would testify here today, you, there's no promise of tomorrow. None of us are promised tomorrow. So you can do two things with your life. You can either invest it or you can waste it. You can give it away or you can serve yourself. Before you decide what to do, I want to encourage you to remember that the Bible says that one day you and I are going to stand before God and he's going to ask you this question. God, he's going to say to you, he's going to say, Wayne, what did you do with everything I gave you? What did you do with those gifts? What did you do with those talents? What did you do with those skills? What did you do with those experiences, that education, that freedom, that money that I gave you? And if you say, God, I, I, I was busy. I, I had an agenda. I had a, I had a dream I was following. It's going to be the wrong answer. I want to hear God say this to me, and I know you do too. It's Matthew 25. It's on the screen. Matthew 25. Here's what I want Jesus to say to me. Well done. Good and faithful what? Servant. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. God loves us so much. He gives us the opportunity to be prepared for the most important day of our life when we're going to stand before him and give an account of our lives. And the most important question he'll ask is what did you do with my son Jesus? Because reality for many here today, before you ever talk about serving or if you ever talk about becoming like Jesus, you got to take that first step. The first step of choosing Christ. The first step of identifying with Jesus, of coming to the cross and saying, God, I want to become a follower of Jesus. Embracing what Jesus has done for you so that you can be saved. And then after that, you serve him. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed all over this room. Christians are praying. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, this morning the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. The Holy Spirit is tugging on the strings of my heart and I recognize that I'm not right with God. I'm not serving Jesus. I'm wasting my life. And today I recognize I need Jesus and I choose Christ. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Because I believe God brought me here to hear this message today. This is, this is my day of salvation. I'm ready to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. He's number one in my life from this day forward. I agree that I'm a sinner and I failed. And I'm gonna embrace the grace of God and run to the cross here today so that I can be saved. Heads are bowed, our eyes are closed all over this room. If you say, Pastor, that's me, would you pray for me? I need to make it right with God today. Would you put your hand up right now? Put it up. God bless you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, keep raising them. Keep raising them. Several hands are going up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Many hands are raised. If your hands raised, I want you to pray this prayer with me and everybody that would like to join them in a confession of faith, would you say this, dear God, thank you for bringing me to church today. Thank you for loving me. I agree with you that I'm not ready to meet you face to face. Today I wanna to be ready. I agree with you. I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws and I'm sorry. Today I choose to serve Jesus and embrace the cross where Jesus died because of my sin. He rose again to give me a new life. So Holy Spirit, give me the power to serve Jesus every day. From this day forward, Jesus, I choose you to follow you. 
Now help me serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you give God praise for these who have responded here today? If you were one of those folks that raised your hand, in just a few minutes we're going to dismiss, and I'd like to ask any of the pastors that are here to stand across the front. Would you come when we dismiss in a moment and come find one of these pastors? We'll be standing right here in the front, and we just want to pray with you and encourage you. And uh, just shake your hand, hug your neck. We're not going to give you snakes or flowers to sell. We're just going to welcome you to the family of God and just give you some encouragement about what it means to follow Jesus, okay? Everybody else, I want you to take this volunteer sheet with you, okay? It's in your bulletin, so I would like to not see any of these laying around after church today. I want you to take this with you. I want you to begin to pray about it. I want you to begin to think about it, talk about with your family about how you can serve how you can get involved, and uh, how you can be part of what God's doing to meet the needs in the church and in the community, okay? And over the next few weeks, you know what's going to happen to the body of Christ? We're going to activate the gifts and talents and resources, and God's going to do wonderful things through you and through us together. Amen? Have a blessed day. We love you so much. God bless you.